to Acts chapter 16. We're going to look at verse 16, and I think that there's a, a passage here that is going to be a bit unusual in the way that it uh, is spoken of today, but I trust the Lord will use it because His Word is not going to return void. It will accomplish some good. And yet it's a message that's for people that are somewhat more mature than babes in Christ. How many of you have been saved for quite some time? Can I see your hand? You that have been in this journey for a while? Well, good. That's about one-fourth of you. The rest of you that are babes in Christ, I'm glad that this is your first Sunday in church. But Or else you had a hard time getting your arm up. I don't know which. But anyway, we want to get into God's Word. And it's Acts 16. Chapter 16, verse 16. I want to read out of the Living Bible. It suits me better uh, in this moment, but you can follow in yours. One day, as we were going down to the place of prayer beside the river, we met a demon-possessed slave girl who was a fortune teller and earned much money for her masters. She followed along behind us shouting, These men are servants of God, and they have come to tell you how to have your sins forgiven. This went on day after day. As I read this passage of Scripture, I find I struggle in my thinking, because I think in modern times there would be some of our different ministries that would ordain her. There was nothing wrong with her message. There was nothing wrong with what she was saying. It was how that she as a possessed vehicle was delivering it was the problem. And I want to say to you and I today that just because you have the right message, you better have the right spirit. Oh, listen, all over this city... And throughout this world today, there will be people that are going to give a message just as clear as this demon-possessed woman gave. There was nothing wrong with her message. She couldn't give a better message. Listen to the message that she gives. These men are servants of God, and they have come to tell you how to have your sins forgiven. Listen, there'd be a lot of people be saying amen to that demon-possessed girl. There would a lot of people would say, oh, go on, girl. Go on, girl. Go on, girl. Go on, girl. But Paul, in that moment, the Scripture tells us he was grieved because he knew the core of this situation was not built on God. The message can be right, but if the Spirit is wrong, you need to be changed by the power of God. You can have the right message, and you can say, I love you, husband, and still have no use for him. You can say, I love you, wife, and wish that she wasn't even around. You can have the right message without having the right spirit. And we got a lot of people having a right message, but it's not the right spirit. My God, change my spirit. My God, change my spirit. My God, change my spirit. She'd never been to a Bible school. She'd never been trained by anybody else. She was prompted by a demon to have a great message. You don't hear this preached, but it's in your word. It's in the scripture God has given you. And this man, Paul, heard it day after day. A woman who was possessed with demon spirits of fortune telling. And she stood up and said, hell of you people, listen to me. All you people, listen to me. All you people, listen to me. These men are servants of God. These men are servants of God. These men are servants of God. And they have have come to tell you how to have your sins forgiven. How do you deal with something like that? How do you deal with something like that? How do you deal with the truth when it's coming through the wrong person? 
How do you deal with the truth coming through the wrong person? That's the biggest problem we got in church. We got the truth coming through the wrong people that don't have the right motivation, who are not prompted by the Holy Ghost, but because they come across with the right truth, we say we'll put you in here, and we'll put you over there, and we'll connect you here, and we'll put you over these people. We better get back to God and find out what is the spirit that's working in people. What is is the spirit that's prompting them. This is not my message. It's his. A demon possessed woman. Came across good enough to get applause. To get the attention of everybody. And said everything that was perfect. And was prompted by a demon. And it was motivated by a demon. I want to tell you, everybody working in church isn't right with God. But you'll find something about people that are demon-possessed and motivated. They're trying to get attention. They're trying to get attention. You don't find many people like that coming to a prayer meeting where nobody's exalted. You don't find them getting the book open all by themselves. They're waiting for a crowd before they shine. They're waiting for a crowd before they shine. And she stood in that moment and under a demonic power, she looked and she saw there's something here that is big and powerful and there's something here that is mighty. And she spoke a word that you couldn't argue with no matter how much you knew God. You had to know exactly that what she said couldn't be no more on the line of truth as possible could be said. And yet Paul was grieved in his spirit. Listen, when you come to church, you shouldn't feel demon spirits all over the place. And there's times when we look and see the program is great and we look and see the building is great and we look and see everything is right. But when you get behind the scenes, you realize there's something wrong. There's something wrong. There's something wrong because it's not prompted by his life, his love, his spirit. It sounds right, but it doesn't cause me to have the peace that God gives me. The right message prompted by a wrong spirit. That doesn't just happen in church, it happens in everything. The right message prompted by a wrong spirit. You listen to politics and what do you hear? You hear something that's reasonable. You don't hear somebody talking crazy. If they did, they'd never get a chance to get elected. They got something that you think, yeah, maybe that's right. And listen, I can tell you, somebody can be running for office and tell you every right thing. It doesn't mean you're getting the right man just because you hear the right thing. you got to understand, where is the spirit of this thing? Just because truth comes out of somebody, it doesn't mean that they're walking in his spirit. Just because you hear something reasonable, you got to go further than that. Listen in this hour, the message was perfect and that is so strange to me to realize that a demon could talk something so clear and so convincing and so positive and get so involved in it and give everything but an altar call. A demon was there saying, I got a word for you. These are God's men. I got a word for you. They'll tell you how to get your sins forgiven. I got a word for you. But Paul said, if God's not the one who's saying it, I don't care what's said, I want it to cease. And he said, you unclean spirit, come out of her. And all of a sudden, she didn't have nothing to say anymore. This is a deep message. And you that are deep are going to have to take it to God and, and, and to get something out of this that's deeper than what you realize. This is not a message for babes. This is a message for people in this hour that are in the midst of the battle. And just because they've got the right message, they think I'm right. God help us. 
We wonder why preachers can have the right message and run off with a secretary. We wonder why preachers can have the right message and do the wrong thing. We wonder why church leaders can have the right message and tear a church up. It isn't hard to understand when you know that demons know how to preach. Demons know how to teach. Demons know how to lead. Demons know how to counsel. Didn't hear no amen on that one, but anyhow. Demons can fool you if you don't know the Spirit. Because so often we think that every demon is going to have a contrary message, and normally they will. Normally they will, because the devil comes to steal and to kill and destroy. And so you don't expect a demon to be doing something that resonates with what the preacher is supposed to be doing. But when the devil wants attention, he'll do anything to get on television. He'll do anything to get a building. He'll do anything to get a congregation. He'll do anything to get a following. But we need to follow him who is Jesus the Lord. you got to follow him. If you ever go to a church and you think, I, I don't know what's wrong here, but something's not right. And you think, I don't want to judge, and that's good. That's healthy not to. But you understand, they seem to, people seem to be getting something out of that, jumping all over the place. Moon, they're boogieing on down. Somebody's saying, Honda Ka, Honda Shah. <laughs> People getting slain in the spirit? Did you check what spirit? Did you check what spirit? But why is this message important to me is because I know that I always depend on what I hear. Either coming to me or through me. And this message gives caution to me just because I'm saying the right thing. It doesn't mean I'm in the right spirit. And I got to go back and I got to check and realize that it's not just that I know the right word. I have to know the right spirit. The Lord is that spirit. And where the spirit of the Lord is, there is his fullness, his anointing, his love, his power, his mercy, his grace. My God, help us in this hour. We need to have a foundation that starts with Christ and Christ alone. On Christ, the solid rock, we have to stand. All other ground is sinking sand. I was up the best part of the night situation that came up in the family. And I got up this morning and I said, Lord, I got nothing to give. Came into the office and I said, Lord, I got nothing to give. He just always kind of says to me, why don't you depend on me? Like you've always had to. And I wasn't even in here for the offering because I was still scrambling to find what is it that God wants you to hear today that can be a benefit to you and a blessing. I thank God for the Holy Spirit. I thank God for the Holy Spirit. I thank God that when I was just a little kid, maybe 12, 13 years of age, in my dad's church that didn't believe in the baptism of the Holy Ghost until my mother received the baptism of the Holy Spirit, and during the week, raising my hands, and I'd gone to Bethesda Missionary Temple when it was on uh, Nevada at Van Dyke. And I'd heard the Word of God, and I'd been there on, on th Thursday nights, I believe it was, or Friday, young people. And I'd been there week after week, asking for God to give me the Holy Spirit. But God is such a God of order, and He didn't let me receive the Holy Spirit in another church, which would have been wonderful. But in my dad's church, where that he had been, not only my father, but also pastor over me, I lifted my hands in the middle of the day and received the Holy Spirit. 
and then begin to speak ilianda la kaya kama mansiti anda lokoye hiki anda la tia listi ki anda leteas and I was filled with the Holy Ghost. And I want to tell you, it's not that I've always been right, but I've always had the right spirit. You may not always be right, but get the right spirit. Because if you got the right spirit, He will lead you. He will guide you. He will direct you. He'll bring you to repentance. He'll transform your life. He will make you what you ought to be. But you got to have more than the right message. You've got to have the right spirit. Hear it! If you'd ever asked me, would you like to share everything that's negative about you since you were a little child, the answer would be never. But I can share with you in spite of the fact there may be things that I'm not proud of, this one thing I know, that he who began a good work in me has continued that work. And it's not just the word that I say, but it's a spirit that is in me. The Lord is that spirit. And where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. Thank God for his life and spirit. Give God a praise offering. She followed along behind us shouting, These servants of God, men are servants of God, and they have come to tell you how to have your sins forgiven. This went on day after day until Paul in great distress turned and spoke to the demon within her. I command you in the name of Jesus Christ to come out of her. He said, and instantly it left her. Her master's hopes of wealth were now shattered. They grabbed Paul and Silas and dragged them before the judges at the marketplace. You'll want to read further when you have convenient time and realize that doing the right thing doesn't always bring applause. Especially when you're in the spiritual things. This did not benefit Paul in that moment as far as his freedom to minister. But he recognized that he had begun in the Spirit, and he had to continue in the Spirit, and he couldn't have the devil helping him. I don't want the devil to help me even if he's willing to carry half the burden. I don't want the devil to help me. Listen, some people think as long as you can help us, come on. I, you may not in this hour be of a right spirit then don't help us if you're not right with God don't help us if you're not right with God don't help us if you're not under the anointing don't help us except you say God I want to know you in the power of your resurrection a whole lot of Ministers would have given her a pledge card. She was bringing in a whole lot of money, fortune telling. But Paul was grieved in his spirit. We can all relate when we see the spirit of the enemy in somebody else. What about yourself? You need to be able to look in your own life. You need to be able to see the reflection in your mental mind of your own self and see something about you that's not the way it ought to be and say, God, I don't like the spirit that I have been reflecting in all day today. I don't like the mood I've been in all day today. I don't like the attitude I've been in all day today. I want to be cleansed from this. I want this work of darkness to cease. I want your spirit to touch me. I want your power to touch me. I want your anointing to touch me. I wish every one of you here were in leadership today. Because so many people in leadership need to hear this message. Because we're able to deliver the truth. We think we're standing on the truth. 
You can deliver the truth and still not be standing on the truth. You can deliver the truth and lose your foundation in the truth. Let me take you to another passage here today by the grace of God. James chapter 2, looking at verse 19. Are there still some among you who hold that only believing is enough? Believing in one God? Well, remember that the demons believe this too. So strongly that they tremble in terror. That's God's word. Thank God for your faith. But you better find out what spirit that faith is in. Because the demons are saying amen to that. When will you ever learn that believing is useless without doing what God wants you to do? But I want to take it further than that. But doing what God wants you to do in His Spirit. In His Spirit. In His Spirit. Now the Lord is that Spirit. And where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty only when it's His Spirit. Let me take you to another difficult scripture here for a moment. This one is found in looking in Luke chapter 11. And, and this is not an easy passage to, to grasp its full intent. Verse 21. For when Satan, strong and fully armed, and it's a little more clear in the Living Bible, but your Bible is a translation. This is only a paraphrase, and so you look at what you're reading. For when Satan, strong and fully armed, guards his palace, it is safe until someone stronger and better armed attacks and overcomes him, and strips him of his weapons, and carries off his belongings. Now first of all, we believe, leave your hands off of people, leave your hands off of situations. And so the truth of this thing doesn't resonate with our natural thinking. Because when there is a strong uh, kingdom with a palace, and it is safe, We assume that we respect that. But what is being said here is that the safe palace that is strong is not what ought to be. It's the devil's camp. And somebody has to come and tear that thing down. And who is that somebody? Jesus. And who is that somebody? His body. And you got to be tearing something down when you get right with God. But don't you start tearing something down until repentance starts with you. Until repentance start with you. Until repentance start with you. Because if you're going to tear the devil's kingdom down, you're going to tear down a kingdom with a palace. You know, we'd like to think all we're going to do is go after those people who are out in the streets and the people that are caught up in alcohol and drugs, sexual sin. Listen, those people are captive in this hour. You better have your sights higher than that. The thief comes to steal and to kill and destroy, and he's working not just in the gutter. He's working in palaces of business and palaces of government and palaces of religion and palaces of churches. And if you're going to do God's will, you're going to go in where some polish is and say it's time to recognize that Jesus is Lord, I come against what is here. Jesus said that when the person who shouldn't be there has a palace and is powerful, he's comfortable. He's comfortable. There's a lot of comfort in a lot of trash today. 
You look at the pornography business, it is the most prosperous business there is. And we might be going into a bit of a recession, but I'll tell you, pornography isn't going to be hurt. Pornography will go on. If people lose some jobs here and there and somewhere else, there'll still be jobs in pornography. Believe me, there'll still be jobs in the things of ungodliness. It will continue. Until somebody with not just the right message, but the right spirit begins to realize if my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways and turn from their wicked ways. Don't you start with the porn business. Start with your pride. Start with your anger. Start with your carnality. Start with your sinfulness. Start where you're at and get right with God before you begin to have something facing somebody else. When Paul cast that demon out of that fortune teller, he'd already started somewhere else. Where did he start, Pastor? He started with himself. He said, I bring myself under subjection. I command you, Paul, to do what's right. I make you submit to the law of God. Too many of us want to begin to get into the middle of the battle out there somewhere. Start right where you're at and say, God, set me free. Deliver me. Loose me from the power of the enemy. Let me be full of the Holy Ghost and let your spirit abide in me. Paul didn't begin with that damsel. He didn't begin with her. He began with himself. And if you ever have a heart to cast out devils, then start right where you're at. Don't play leapfrog. See, mine's only emotional, yours demonic. Mine's only situational, my husband. Yours is demonic. I see your problem. It's me, Lord, standing in the need of prayer. It's me, Lord, standing in the need of prayer. But he who begins a good work within me will take it higher as he lets me be a blessing to somebody else. But i got to start with me. i got to begin with me. Make me right, God. Make me right, God. Make me right. I need you to make me right. Stand with me in this service. I don't think you'll hear this message preached anywhere else except God allows it. It's not a popular message. You don't get this out of a magazine, seven messages for the last quarter of the year. But her message was right. Her spirit was wrong. Before you get comfortable because you got the right message, find out what kind of spirit you have. And God's Holy Spirit can reveal it to you. You need more than the right message. Some people, the greatest moment of their time is ministry because they're transformed into an angel of light. The Bible says the devil gets transformed when he preaches too. The devil gets transformed when he preaches. The devil gets transformed when he preaches. God, I don't want to wait to preach. I want to know you the same Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, as well as all day Sunday. I want to know your touch. I'm going to ask your congregation to come and stand around the front of the church because God is here today. And it's not the same message for everyone, but 
If you don't normally hear a message because you are above the crowd, God has just clipped you down a little bit today, and he's got your attention. Because it's not what you're saying. It's a spirit that is prompting you that is important. And you need the right spirit. You need the right spirit. You need the right spirit. You need to be delivered from the spirit that's not right. The ministry of Jesus in the body of Christ is to cast out devils. And there's demonic forces that cause us to be prompted to be a puzzle to ourselves and to others. And there's those of you that are here today, you're a puzzle to yourself and you're a puzzle to others. And why? Because you're saying the right thing, but the pressure that is in you isn't the right spirit. It's the work of the enemy. But God is here to set you free today. He's here to deliver you. And in the name of Jesus, I command you, foul spirit, you go now. In the name of Jesus, I ask it. In the name of Jesus, I ask God that you would thank you, Lord. Lift your hands and begin to praise God. There's some deliverance going on. There's some deliverance going on. There's some deliverance going on. The Lord is that spirit. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. There's not as many thoughts and spirits as there was when we started this service. Somebody's getting set free. Somebody's getting delivered. Somebody's getting loosed. Somebody's under the anointing. Somebody is getting blessed. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Now lift your heads and hands and worship Him. Just lift your hands and praise Him. Just magnify the name of the Lord. There's a spirit in this place and it's the spirit of the Lord. There's a great spirit in this place and it's the spirit of Jesus. The Lord is that spirit. And where the spirit of the Lord is, there's liberty. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. 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 Thank you, Jesus. Now, Heavenly Father, as we leave this place, let us be cleansed and remain in that cleansing. I claim it in the name of Jesus, and I thank you, Lord. God's people said amen. Amen.